I'm going to look at Google Meet, which is an application everyone will have as part of their school issued account. Firstly, I'm going to look at ways to set up a Google Meet, and there are a few ways that I can do this. One of the first ways you can do it is you can go into your calendar and I can select a day that I want my meeting to happen. So I'm going to select May 12th. And then I'm going to type in the name of my meeting. So I'm going to say it's an English department meeting. There's no location, so I'm going to add a Google Meet video conferencing. This automatically generates a link for participants to click on to join the meeting. Next, I need to add some guests. So I type in what the email addresses of whoever I'd like to come to my meeting. And then I'm going to add in a time. So I'm going to say two o'clock on May the 12th, and I'm going to leave it from two to three. So I'm happy enough with that. I'm going to click save on that for my calendar and it automatically asks me, would you like to send invitation emails to the Google Calendar guests? I want to do this because this sends an email to all my guests and it gives them the link and, I and notifies them that the meeting has happened. So I'm going to click send on that. What this looks like for the staff or the students is they receive an email that looks like this. And you can see here that when they open their email, they have the option to join the Hangout Meets by clicking on this link here. They can also add it to their calendar by clicking yes here. So you'll see I was, I've been invited to a staff meeting on April the 28th. I've clicked yes on it. So when I come back into my calendar here, you can see that that staff meeting is in my calendar. When I click on that, I can join at the time I can join the Google meeting with that link there. So that's another way for me to be able to join if I need to. Another way to generate a Google meet is via classroom. So I'm in my second year English class here and I want to invite them to a meeting. So I can go into settings here, this little cog. And when I click on class settings, I scroll down. And you'll see now that there is a meet feature down here and it says generate meet link. So I'm going to click on that and generate a meet link. So this generates a meet link. It automatically slides over to visible to students. If I don't want the link to be visible to students at the moment, I can unselect this. But for the moment, I'm not going to because I want to see what it looks like. So I'm going to leave it visible to students. I'm going to click on save. And when I come out now, you can see that the meet, the meet link is up there on Classroom. So then I can contact my students via email and I can tell them that I want to meet them at three o'clock maybe today. And all they have to do is log on to Classroom, click on this link here, and they'll automatically be able to join the meeting. Okay, a third way to do it is you can actually go directly in through Meet itself. So you click on Meet and this is what it looks like here. You can see I have nothing scheduled for today. So I'm going to click on Join or Start a Meeting. The first thing I have to do is to give it a name. So I'm going to stick with my second year English class. I'm going to click Continue. And this is generating the meeting. You can see my camera is starting here. First thing I'm going to do is turn my camera off. You're more than welcome to leave it on if you want. It's completely up to you. I can see that no one else is here because I haven't invited anybody else. So I'm going to click on join now. And I can see now that this has brought me into the meeting and I have the option to add people where I can type in people's email addresses, or I can click on, click on copy joining information. I can come out to my email and I can paste that in and type in my subject here, link to the meeting, and I can type in the email addresses of whoever I'd like to come and attend the meeting. So I'll know when people have started attending the meeting because I'll see this people up here start to change at the moment I can see that I'm the only person in here. When the students do join, it's a good idea to suggest that they mute their mics and this is their mic down here. So when they click on this, they can turn off their microphone. And 
it's a good idea to do this because if there's quite a lot of them in the room, you can get some sound feedback. What students can do is unmute their mic when they want to ask a question. Teachers also have the options of individually muting students or removing them entirely if they want to by clicking on the people here and there will be three little buttons here that you can click on to remove the students or to mute them individually when the students are in if you want to. Okay, so now that I'm in my meeting and my students are here, I may want to share my screen with them because I may want to discuss something with them. So I click on present now. You can present your entire screen and you need to think about this because make sure that there's nothing on your laptop that you don't want people to see. So I'm going to click on share now and you can see that I've started presenting my screen. Okay, so I might want to come into classroom and you can see here I've talked to students. I've set a learning intention here. We're learning to write a book review and I've attached a Google document where I discuss the success criteria as well. So I may want to discuss that with the students if I want to. I don't have to share this through Google Classroom. I can also just create a document and share it like that as well. So I may want to talk about a sample book review as well with the students and discuss that. I may also want to talk to them about uh, a website. So for example, study click, and I may want to go through some of the features of that with them. So when I'm finished talking about all that, I can stop sharing my screen and I can continue on then with, with whatever I want. Okay, so students can comment at all time through using the comment feature here. So they can click on that and they can comment, they can ask a question instead of maybe four or five students trying to talk at once, they can type in comments or questions or feedback that they might have for the teacher. The teacher can also do that with the students as well and you can share stuff. So I might want to share the address of uh, studyclicks.ie so I can put it into the message in there and I can send that to the students as well. In recent weeks, Google has made the record feature for schools free. free. So this is currently free until July for schools and because students may or may not be able to attend at the time that you're having the meeting and the same with staff because people might be sharing laptops and it just may not be convenient for them to attend. So this gives you the feature that you can record your, your session and then students or staff can watch it at a later time that suits them. So how you use the record feature is down here in the very bottom right hand corner, there are three dots. When I click on that, I can click on record meeting. Okay, because this is a temporary feature, your admin person may have to activate it in your G Suite admin console. There's a separate video on how to do this for your admin person on the PDST video conferencing page. Um, so when you're finished recording your meeting, you can hit stop and the link can be shared either emailed out to participants or you can email, you can post it in classroom as well and let the students know that it's there. Okay, so finally, it's very important and I can't emphasize this enough that when you have students in your meeting, you are the last person to leave the meeting. It's important that you don't leave the students behind as this can cause problems. Always ensure that all participants have left before you finish up the meeting. You finish up the meeting by clicking on this red button here to leave call. The very best of luck with it.